Hi everyone, I'm Sandra Ingerman and welcome to the Shaman's Cave. And I'm Renee Barbo, and we are really happy to be here with you today. And look at the Usami share train. <laughs> well, this is Sami so sweet. So um, Renee and I thought that we talk about uh, burnout today. Um, I think we're both feeling a little bit of it ourselves. And so it's a, a topic that we thought that we um, bring up today. And um, I, I know that for me, um, um, I, I tend to have been an overgiver uh, throughout my life. And I know that many of you um, oftentimes write me that if I would take more time off, I might be feeling better. Um, you know, people <laughs> have a lot of opinions on things. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, it's not that I need time off because I love to work and, and work actually empowers me. And um, the work that I do, I've spent my whole entire life uh, doing. So it's what I love. But what I don't love is how much people ask without giving anything in return. And there's an amazing amount of asking going on right now from anywhere from promote my book, endorse my book, never met the person in my life, don't know who they are, um, so many people asking for money, so many people just asking, will I support their work, but never saying, can I do anything for you in return? And so um, we talk about um, in our culture that giving is just good as giving, and you should just be happy giving, and you should never ask for anything back. But Renee and I have done endless shows on sacred reciprocity and how in shamanism, one of the uh, biggest principles is about reciprocating. And so when you're putting out energy, energy needs to come back. There's a flow. It's like if you, uh, those of you who get into scarcity consciousness, when you start making money, if you actually give more money um, out as donations, it's amazing what ends up coming back to you. And people don't understand that. They don't understand the process of when you give and you give something back, even when you don't have the energy to do it, something magical happens where all of a sudden, um, everybody feels empowered and everybody feels more energy to, to keep going. Mm -hmm. There's so many, there's so many things I could unpack from there. I was working on um, my book, the practical shaman this week, and I was writing a, a section on give because I'm always seeing people like on, on Facebook and other places talking about Aini and, and reciprocity as, as this, like I deserve to charge three hundred dollars a session because then we're in right relationship and then you know you know in the the deal is clean and we can move on. And so I was doing a little research and I got back to the National Geographic about because in in Peru it the Aini reciprocity was a farming concept. And they were, imagine they're working on these steps because, you know, the Incas took all the good land and they got, you know, the steps along on the top of the mountain. And, they, you know, they were potato farmers. Mm -hmm. Just imagine what it's like to dig. Think about, about your living room, all right? And they're all potatoes in your living room, all under the earth. And you've got a living room full of potatoes to dig up about 1,500 pounds of potato for the year. Well, you can't possibly do that by yourself. Or if you do, you're going to be really tired. And so the, the concept of reciprocity came about like that today you're all good. The whole community is going to come over and harvest my potatoes. And then tomorrow we're all going to go over and harvest your potatoes. And because when you're harvesting with a group of people, then you're laughing, you're having food, you know, they're drinking the chicha and all of that. But that this idea of 
you know, this one-on-one -on -one reciprocity when it's convenient for me isn't really like what this is all about. And, and, and you know that, Sandra, we've been doing this podcast, what, for six years? Mm -hmm. Really, the money comes out of our pocket. Now, you might say, well, that's good for promotions or you're just doing this. You know, we have some contributors, but for the amount of people who listen to it, it it's more like, let me take off this well instead of what am I giving back to the flow of life? And you might be turning around giving it to the flow of your community. I don't know that you'd have to let us know. But, you know, we do this because we are givers of service we we believe in what we're we're saying and what we're doing and you know i don't think i've ever gotten resentful about showing up and doing this and that's a good sign and does it always come back like for my workshops filling up or people buying my books hardly ever it's <laughs> <laughs> hey renee i get so much from this sign up for a workshop zip you know crickets so i don't know maybe I'm just funny on camera and you don't think I'm a good teacher. I, I, who knows? Yeah, it's, 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 we're, we're really dealing with, um, changing phases on the planet, you know, because when I first started teaching shamanism, um, when I, um, when I would come into a group, my God, the group held space. And we had so much magic that happened. Everybody came in so energetic. Nobody wanted a bathroom break. I've talked about in Europe, I'd be trying to sleep and they'd be drumming in the basement all night. <laughs> they didn't want to stop because they were going to be going home to these little villages where they probably get burnt if they say they went to a shamanic workshop. So I was used to... Uh, all this energy in my workshops and it was beautiful and then um uh email came in and everybody showed up to my workshops with their computers their cell phones every uh, every break instead of talking to people they were running out to check their emails or make phone calls and what I started noticing was the first thing people would come up to me and say it is not Sandra, it's nice to meet you. It and not saying my name and I never met these people before and it happened in every single workshop um, when computers, um, when email came in. I cannot tell you how exhausted I am not hello it's nice to meet you it's nice to be at this workshop just walking up to me straight and saying i can't tell you how exhausted i am so um so what started happening at that point was i was the only person holding space in workshops and where i used to go home and couldn't sleep for three days because i'd be so high from the workshop and from the group I was coming into my front door and laying down in the hallway of my front door. I, I couldn't stand up because um, nobody brought any energy to the workshop. It was all just me. And now um, we're in a new phase <laughs> of um, people are still, they're listening to courses while they're doing their dishes and cooking and and, you know, not getting not getting the full energy of what shamanism is. But, uh, but now people don't want to take a course and they don't want to read a book. They want to learn about shamanism on Facebook. And there is no way to teach about shamanism on Facebook. It's an experiential. You have to, you have to dive into it. So we keep moving from being able to hold space for each other, like what you're talking about, if I mean, really is a community coming together. And well, I'm a little tired now, so I'm going to hold space for the group. Um, and we don't see that anymore. We, we just don't see that anymore. And it's, it's interesting because, um, 
we also don't see the magic of the miraculous healings that we used to see anymore, too. Yeah, I taught a class recently for the College of Psychic Studies, and they required the students to come live, which was like, it was a first. I mean, it wasn't a class of 100 people, but it was a class of over a dozen people. And everyone was there. Everyone, I, everyone got to put their name in and talk a bit. And, and, you know, we did some techniques and then they shared their experiences. And it felt like a deeper connection than say, when you're just talking, you know, to that somebody might be listening later. You don't even know if they're, you know, someone cyber stalking you or, you know, <laughs> or that they're really there and everyone showed up on camera and you could see the whites of their eyes. And it was really different. It was a really different experience. And I know, you know, that for me, it's been really important to do things more in person and in community like that. And I really think that I, I, I may just change the, the practice of teaching wind work into like one three hour, four hour clump so that people have to show up live if they're going to you know, get it so I can see who's there, who's who's participating, and how they're going to get back in the future. Right, right, yeah. No, it's uh, we're we're in an interesting stage because, on one level, I see the spiritual community evolving way past anything I've ever seen before, and on another level, I see people who are staying incredibly stuck. Um, because they don't have the energy or the curiosity. Um, I think it goes along with not having the energy um, to be curious about what would happen if I really stepped in and really participated mm -hmm. and really gave my all in health space. Um, what would happen? And so I, I think that um, we're again at a changing phase. We're always at a changing phase in our culture. And I think that um, people who are really showing up are evolving at levels, as I said, I've, I've never seen um, so far. But a lot of people are just always going to go, I wonder, uh, I wonder why I'm not getting any help in life. I, I wonder why. Um, I wonder why everybody's talking about the miracles that are happening for them. Right. And I'm not understanding. And I keep asking on Facebook, um, teach me about shamanic healing. Teach me about shamanic healing so I can get to this place that you're at. Teach me on Facebook. <laughs> so, right. um, yeah, so we're just, it, it, we're at a, another choice period where mm -hmm. it's, for people to make a choice and it really and it really causes you know it does cause burnout um it does it it doesn't feed it's not the fertilizer that we need you know i i always keep saying oh I, you know like that i'm doing the community community beach cleanup you know why because the community comes they bring their rakes they bring their shovels we all clean the beach we have a hot dog or a not a dog or whatever you're going to have. And then we know each other. So when we walk around the neighborhood, we we say, hey, thanks for coming to the beach cleanup. And we feel like we're a part of something. And, and so you might not have a beach to clean up, but you certainly have a park or you have a, you know, there's something that you can get participating in that is bigger than your computer screen. And it really is what repeats refeeds re us. I, it's just, I do a, a behavior healthcare conference at UCLA and it's in person. And you know what happens there? Something magical happens beyond the speakers who are talking, beyond the participants who are coming. And it there's like, there's a magic that happens when people get together, get up a little bit early, go for the gong bath, before they hear the next, you know, new scientific discovery. You mm -hmm. can't do that so well on a on a computer screen when you can just shut down your your nobody sees you, you can hide, you know, you show up in your jammies. We don't even get dressed anymore. 
<laughs> are we just that tired? Or are we just that lazy? I, I don't really know which. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, I I only dress for the shaman's case. <laughs> Well, I could dress for today too. I put on a shirt and pack. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I even put on I, lipstick. <laughs> I've been wearing two sweatshirts for two years now. <laughs> <laughs> we are tired of just giving and giving. <laughs> um, and not we're not talking. We we trust me. Both Sandra and I live really nice lives. We've worked really hard in our lives, and we have a lot of things a lot of other people don't have. And, you know, for me, I had to go back to work in a job because I got so frustrated by the lack of support that I felt in the spiritual community. I thought I'm either going to be resentful or I'm going to go get a job that's going to pay me so that I can do my spiritual work in peace. And, you know, as I get ready to retire, it's like I want I want that to switch. I want the community to show up and support, you know, the 30 years plus of work and the teachings, the 10 years of teaching and say, yeah, that I can support this. And if not, you know, maybe I'll stop teaching. <laughs> right. Yeah. I doubt it, but you know, I'll teach I'll teach the neighbors how to build a fire. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know because it's in my nature to teach and to be show up in service. You're always gonna be teaching. Yeah, I realize that I always say, um, I always say publicly that I write my books for myself, which is true. I, um, I've, um, as we know, people who are really drawn to shamanism are wounded healers. And so I have been on a path, um, all my time in shamanism of being in service. And I also have a really strong practice of using shamanism to heal my own life. And so I always say that I write my books for myself. Um, I really do. And some of my books, I can, I can tell you, even though um, I have all these Facebook pages and email lists, some of my books have sold less than a thousand copies. And so I, what I realized is they really are just for me. <laughs> and so I'm going to start going back and reading these books that I wrote for me because they were so filled with information for me of um, of living life and, and weaving together mysteries that I've learned from the spirits and um, and how I can use it to heal my own life. And so I finally come to, well, why why am I so um, why do I get so upset when a book only sells a thousand copies when I really wrote it for me? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I've realized that I'm actually, um, moving into letting go of, um, how much sharing I'm doing and going back to more reflecting on, um, on my own life and and where my own life is going to and that feels really good to me i love to teach so i'll always teach and um people show up to my workshops but i'm definitely um i'm definitely backing uh, away and and i think it's appropriate i'm 71 years old and so it's that time of reflection um yeah. It's it's a new phase, and so I just see that we're moving into really, really new phases. Um, a lot of shamanic teachers are realizing that they are burned out. Um, a lot of students are realizing that they that they're only willing to participate to a certain extent, and so that's where their shamanic practice is going to end up. Um, you end up where you put your energy into. And so it's just an interesting time of, I think, people reworking um, where they really want to focus their energy so that they don't get burnt out because of all the information that, that we're flooded with through social media and through the news, um, we all have to make healthy choices of 
what is burning us out? Is the news burning us out? Is social media burning us out? Is people asking for too many things and not giving anything back burning us out? Is not having people to hold space in your life burning you out? We all have to look at where is it that we don't feel that there's a return coming back? And that might be your answer of what your next step of letting go is. If no return is coming back, um, it might be time to say, um, I need to make a different choice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, one of my one of my spiritual friends, she's been doing dating dating workshops. I think people just are reinventing themselves in a lot of different ways. Like, you know, like she's doing dating, you know, on an, our, on our little island and, and it's feeding her. So sometimes we need to take a break from, because to me, so, someone was writing on the wind work, wind wall lately, the wind clad wall. She said, oh, my dream is when I don't have to work my full-time job anymore and I can stop hiding my shamanism. And I'm thinking like, that to me is just an excuse. I bring my shamanism to work every single day. You know, and somebody yesterday said, Renee, you have so much, you have so much nerve that you say these things out loud to people. And they're like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and just co-sign people's bullshit, you yeah. know, because if I'm going to be here, it needs to be in a certain impeccable standard. And it doesn't mean to say that I don't have to get along with people, but if we're going to say we're, we're offering conscious health, then we need to be offering conscious health at all levels, not when it serves us to say we're doing conscious health, but over here we're, you know, creating a little shaky deal on the side. It, it doesn't, how you show up for anything in your life is how you show up for everything. So when my editor said, oh, you seem, this doesn't have your normal vitality. I, and I had to look at it first. My first response was, what do you mean? It's a great article. <laughs> that was the editor. What do you mean? That was a really good article. <laughs> and then I like, that was the answer. Like, yes, but I am tired. I just came through a, a season that was like really demanding for me to grow spiritually. And if it doesn't show that I'm tired, then it's just fake. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think, um, I think again, people are looking at, at that. I, I just wrote my next transmutation news. And one of the things that I wrote, and I've written this before, is um, when, when the lockdown happened all over the world, um, I kept getting phone calls from uh, a Native American elder who I have so much respect for. He's just such a humble and wise man. Um, his name is Jose Lucero, and he is an elder at the Santa Clara uh, Pueblo. And... Um, he, he would keep calling me and leaving me messages on my phone. Sandra, please tell people to lead, lead a simple life. Please tell people to lead a simple life. And, um, and we talked about that. We, we did shows on leading a simple life after Jose was so, um, so passionate about me sharing this. And um, I think that um, that's where people are actually now getting back to. They're looking uh, on how complicated their lives have gotten and, and people are burnt out. And so I think that every single one of us, Renee and I just happen to be in a service um, world uh, where we, where we do give, but we both have to set a boundary about, when it's enough is is enough you don't give yourself until you die um and for a lot of people a lot of people are making choices right now a lot of people are making choices right now i i read um something fascinating i don't know if it's true but i read in the news that in china young people are giving up savings to retire um early Talking twenty thirties, 
And um, in America, um, uh, Generation Z, which uh, many of you uh, listen from Generation Z, and I applaud you for making this decision, are making a decision that college isn't going to um, bring you to any place. And so a whole entire generation is going back to learning how to be plumbers, carpenters, uh, service industry, um, where they feel that their efforts will actually pull something in instead of working for a corporation who's always pushing them out with AI and other things. So we're really, we're really turning things around. And I think um, for a younger generation, they're looking at what future makes sense for them. And for those of us elders who have been out there in the collective, working in that way, don't don't take a break, don't rest. Um, you can do it. You know, um, we're all at that place where we're burned out and looking at a new way of uh, living a civil life. Absolutely, well, I think we've hammered this nail into the new <laughs> plumbers into the new plumbers pipe. Um, <laughs> We will all be happy when there's more plumbers and, and electricians and carpenters for sure. You'll be able to get one. Um, but, you know, like, I think you know what you have to do and how you have to be. So how are you making those changes in your life? And, you know, are you tired? Are you burnt out? And are you giving back? You know, have, are you giving to the flow of life? Or are you just damming it up by just, you know, keep been pulling on it and only you know those answers we don't know that for you but we do like you to subscribe we do like you to follow the shaman's cave we do like you to share it with your friends and you know help us keep you know maintaining our, our message out in the world absolutely um the more that you share um the more that you give back and the more that we keep giving and so we're back in in the flow and the river of life will always bring us to a good place as long as we know how to take care of ourselves during the journey. <laughs>